Why would a review make the this come of- out before or after Night at the Museum? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to Pineapple and Lemon Channel. Whoop whoop. Where we are doing a reaction today to a movie. <gasps> Not- <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> that was actually recommended to us by a viewer in our comments. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So Shout out to. Their name is Sunny Sumo. So they gave us a nice comment about one of our videos. And also at the end of it, they thought uh, that we should be doing a Wes Anderson movie. Okay, cool. Specifically, they thought the Royal Tenenbaums. They said it's interesting because it marks a midway point between his picturesque films like Grand Budapest Hotel and the indie grit of something like Rushmore. Okay, I have seen <laughs> neither of those. Do you know what any of those words mean? Words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... It, we will be watching The Royal Tenenbaums today, which is a Wes Anderson movie. Okay. It is one of his first movies. Okay. Uh, Wes Anderson is known as an auteur. If you know, <laughs> do you know what this language? It sounds very artsy fartsy. Yes, this is <laughs> uh, filmic language. So auteur essentially means author, but in the context of movies, the auteur is somebody who has a very distinct style or you can watch their movie and you know it's their movie based either on you know, cinematography, lighting, story beats, like pretty much anything, but it has to have like a very signature feel to it. But we decided to do Royal Tenenbaums, not just based off this comment, but you have not seen this movie before. I've never heard of this film until you (laughs) brought it to my attention. I was like, what is this? Okay. Uh, I have seen this movie. It's been quite a while actually since I've even seen it. So you have a pretty like decked out intensive (laughs) DVD casing for it. I got uh, a, the Criterion version of this movie at a used movie shop. <laughs> so it was like $4, <laughs> but I have like the full decked out one. So Wes Anderson is probably known mostly now for his, uh, he's very particular about how he sets up shots. They're very symmetrical. There's usually a lot of like pastel lightings, almost like He's creating like dioramas, like he's setting up things in a not naturalistic way, Mm. but it's very, there's a lot of precision to it. Mm. And Wes Anderson usually has like pretty dry humor, uh, maybe a little zany, a little quirky. That seems to be what a lot of his movies are. For the plot summary for The Royal Tenenbaums, from INDB, it says the eccentric members of a dysfunctional family reluctantly gather under the same roof for various reasons. So it's leaving a lot up to the imagination with that. First thought is just kind of like a knives out situation. (laughs) (laughs) But is there any thoughts you have before watching this? Not really. I mean, like I'll watch the trailer and it looked a little little quirky. It's not something that I would like gravitate towards, but I would seem like, oh, I have to watch this. It's not, it's definitely like out of my normal scope. So I'm interested to see it. But I think if we're ready to get going, let's do it. We should just get going. Get her started. The library card. It's been so long since I've been to a library. Oh my God. This is just a me thing, but I love when movies have like titles, just explaining like where the scene is or what's going on, or like chapter (laughs) markers. I love that. She and her brother Richie ran away from home one winter and camped out in the African wing of the public archives. How can you stay in the public archives (laughs) overnight? That's like a an adventure as a kid. That's like what you would dream of. Just casually has a pet falcon. I mean, <laughs> these children have a lot. <laughs> they do. You can't tell me this isn't fun. Look how they're introducing everybody. <laughs> you get to know the actor and the character. There you go. Now there's no, um, no doubt, like you gotta know who the actor is now. I think it's great, I love it. Cause you know, sometimes you're like, what is that person's name? You know exactly what their name is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're watching it and you're like, wait, I know this actor, what is he from? <laughs> and you're like, oh, right. But now, now I don't have to IMDb it in the you middle of the exactly film. who it is. Can you pay Do you her? think it would be comfortable to actually live in a hotel? I can't see it being comfortable, right? Because you don't really get to stylize it at all. And then there's like people just uh, every day. There's always just people around you. Yeah, you know? right? like, there's not a lot of privacy. I love that they still wear like essentially costumes, <laughs> like <laughs> reflecting how yeah. they were as kids. Over the loose weave. Well, I feel like I feel like this is a staple for Owen. He's always gonna have a cowboy hat on somewhere. I think it works. <laughs> <laughs> Why would a review make the this come of- out before or after Night at the Museum? <laughs> <laughs> this would have been like early 2000s. So. so before. Very interesting way to paint your toenails. Yeah, because the legs crossed over. And just 
floating in space. And she's smoking. <laughs> it's just like hard to quadruple do. Quadruple tasking. A lot right to do now. at once. Where's that red one going to go? I know Bill Murray just plays himself in every movie, <laughs> but it still works for me. All right? <laughs> I do like the deadpanning of like a lot of these jokes. That's very like of Wes Anderson's movies. If you're putting your characters in like extreme circumstances, you almost have to kind of ground it with like a drier sense of humor. <laughs> the kid grabbed the turtle though. <laughs> was he sleeping beside it? Long as the turtle was in uh, what is in his room. Yeah, in one of the uh, casings, so he grabbed it on his way out of the door, just within arm's reach at all times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't this great? Just like we're camping. Just like the outdoors, really yeah. roughing it <laughs> in a bunk bed <laughs> with a tie rack. <laughs> that cab has a dent in it. What? <laughs> So that's the only thing you noticed. <laughs> Just a small little scratch, little nick. <laughs> Brings the TV. <laughs> Your portable little TV. Portable back then. TV. <laughs> Poses. Get into that position. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Will you give me a chance? No. <laughs> so quick to the draw there. Yeah, right? It's like no. Didn't even let me finish. No. <laughs> but I no. <laughs> <sighs> that feeling of like when you're back with your family you kind of revert into your child revert self. back to childhood yeah the little mannerisms and like he's so like huffs and puffs and gotta stomp my feet up the <laughs> stairs slam a couple doors yeah. i have no interest in franklin benedict or doug cartwright <laughs> <laughs> that was like looney tunes like fell out of the frame <laughs> right <laughs> but somehow has no dirt on him <laughs> can't ruin that blue jacket no. of his you know who i am You'd think with all the safety training that their dad does with them, they wouldn't talk to a well, stranger. That, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, wait, why are you why are you going over there? <laughs> How often has he got you working out? 16 times a week. <laughs> wow. That's G like doing my workouts for yeah, me. That's two or more a day. That's just all day, every day. That's Don't put me down for that. <laughs> I'm good. I'll pass. He also stole bonds out of my safety deposit box when I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> All I can do is laugh. Yeah. Can't even deny. He's like, I can't answer this. <laughs> I need another lawyer present. <laughs> it's funny that they're not playing the brothers in the movie, even though they are brothers. In real life? Yeah. I'm mind blown. Luke Wilson. I no. Owen Wilson. <laughs> There's a lot of Wilsons out there, okay? They look like... <laughs> He's got sunglasses on 90% of the time. And he has a big bushy beard. I can't <laughs> tell. I guess those opening credits didn't help with a few things. <laughs> yeah, I come on. There's so many Wilsons in the world. Dude, I live under a rock sometimes. <laughs> I told you, I'm gonna start my own hermit club. I recommend you push. Fluid. Look at that shot. Did you see that shot? Margot off on the side from everyone else. Mm -hmm. Sorry, 11:30. Lights out. <laughs> Them's the rules. What kind of rules? Where it's like you have to have your lights out by this time. Who made the rules? <laughs> it's 11.30, lights out. <laughs> I love the, of the room. He's just in a little silly tent <laughs> yeah. with his trophies <laughs> and his ribbons and cars. <laughs> All of his favorite possessions. Do you remember those globes that used to light up? <laughs> no. Is what? that a thing? <laughs> yes. Why? Why? We had, a, we had a globe that lit up. It was so cool. Is it so you can see things better? Like, what does it do? Yeah, there's no secrets in it or anything. Yeah. It just, like, looked really cool. You could light it up and spin it. Why are you wearing a swim cap if it's not even covering your hair? For the aesthetic of it all. <laughs> <laughs> Board game closet. Remember when people had those? I'm just, like, trying to soak in all the games that they have. Operation front and center. <laughs> I'm looking at wrist. Oh, they got two. <laughs> they have two copies of Operation. Different versions. <laughs> they are different versions. Sit down, I don't think they're yelling loud enough. I don't know how big this house is. <laughs> yeah, I'm so confused by the sizing of this house. It just feels like never ending. But like the rooms are pretty small. Not a success. Why? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, please. Yeah, what kind of question is that in an interview? This thing that you put a lot of time and effort into. Why wasn't it successful? Why was it garbage? <laughs> please answer this question for me on live television. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I didn't know it was garbage. I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> I eat, I'm head out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my cue. Sorry, gotta go. <laughs> and I got kicked out of my hotel. Oh, he's just like sliding that in like a last ditch effort to be like well can, can, can you let me stay yeah it's not like i tried to break up your potential marriage and faked having cancer and i ran out of money so i wanted to stay here just carrying around my walking stick <laughs> it looks more like a torch than a walking stick <laughs> 
Who's the kid? Like it's his test or? subject. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of forgot because he hasn't been in it this whole time. He was like in two scenes. You still consider me your father? I was waiting for him to be like, well, good, because I wasn't really your father. <laughs> After all this, no way, no way. <laughs> One last plot twist. I don't think it was Ramsey's. Oh my God, I can't even. There's too many Night of the Museum references right now. <laughs> too many. This is the prequel. <laughs> prequel, yes. Where's my shoe? <laughs> Just so delicately, there's your shoe. <laughs> Prince Charming. <laughs> Snack break. <laughs> you gotta fuel yourself for this chase sequence. Yes, can the boy tell time? Oh my Lord, no. <laughs> So even it is, I think, yeah, no, just, no, just, no, just, no, I can't. Poor Dudley. <laughs> oh, no. From the wreckage of what? <laughs> A sinking battleship. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to put what's true on your tombstone, that do is, you? <laughs> that's accurate. Yep. Whatever you want it to Whatever be. Whatever you want it to be. Wes Anderson usually ends his movies on a slow motion shot. All right. Well, that's the Royal Tenenbaums. Royal Tenenbaums. <laughs> this movie, I think you can say is very much a character study. Mm -hmm. It delves into a lot of themes about family and <laughs> familial trauma. Yeah. Also like expectations. And I really like the scene when they're talking about, oh, like you raised our kids. And she's like, I don't think I did a very good job. And he's like, oh, it's not your fault. <laughs> but like <laughs> the parents, yeah. <laughs> the parents have so much to do with shaping your kids. Mm -hmm. But there's also something to be said about, like, no one gets out of childhood unscathed. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just kind of part of it. So, yeah, like, it's not really their fault, but it also is kind of their fault. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I think, like, p the part of it is, like, you know, you want to obviously like, raise your kids to be the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, they're not going to get out of it unscathed. But what you can do is best prepare them for it. You can't just, like, loss over things and not educate them or talk about certain subjects because you think that like oh well like they're they're too young yeah they shouldn't need to know about this, this they're not going to encounter this so then when they do encounter it it kind of hits them like a brick wall and they don't really know how to how to react to it and you can which see which causes more problems you can see how like each of the kids kind of reacts to it whereas mm -hmm. like ben stiller becomes overprotective and that mm -hmm. also has to do with his wife but that's kind of his way and the margo like becomes very secretive so it's mm -hmm. how different people can react even to like very similar situations and just how like we're all just a little bit messed up <laughs> i don't think there's any sane person if you tell me you're sane i'm gonna think you're bananas yeah like there, no <laughs> something's going on and there's something to be said like yes there's character flaws with every single person in this movie mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily dislike anybody no i wouldn't say like you know like you go into a movie thinking oh well there's got to be a villain right yeah. there, this movie doesn't really have a villain like everyone's a villain in their own way mm -hmm. but overall everyone is trying to be better by mm -hmm. the end and that's a lot more to say than some actual people in real life yeah i mean like it's also very like almost situational like these are the decisions that I like you made you mm -hmm. kind of have to live with the consequences of making those decisions and you can justify like oh well in the moment that seemed like the best decision but then you just kind of have to own it at that point it's like yeah i'm making this decision because i think this is the best one and then you just kind of have to deal with the outcome of it yeah <laughs> so it's it's, it's interesting because it's definitely like you know it's a very real real movie it's not like fluffy you, yeah I, to, like make it seem like oh this is the perfect family it's well no they're really not they're just like every other family like the emotions of it are very real mm -hmm. and there are some scenes that are more like i would say we were like kind of laughing throughout the movie you know like chuckling here and there mm -hmm. but then there are some scenes that are more serious mm -hmm. so this is not like a comedy no it has comedic parts to it mm -hmm. overall your thoughts just how you feel afterwards going into it, i didn't really know what to expect mm -hmm. and like i had said it's not really something that like you know i would gravitate towards watching um, so it was kind of like interesting to watch something not in my default genre. Yeah. I still enjoyed it. Like I think like the comedic moments do help. It felt it felt like slow running, but I think that's just like the stylized of the movie. Mm -hmm. But like some of like the points that were just like covered were important points and the way that they did it, I think that they did it did it justice and like everything had a purpose. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't in there for the sake of being a filler it's like you said like he had strategically planned out all of his shots yeah and they all progressed the storyline in some way mm -hmm. so there was no like 
I'm just gonna show the scenery here because I need to fill her till we get to the next part. It's like, no, like this is strategically planned because I need a shot of this. I need a shot of that because this is driving the story forward. Yeah, cause you could say, and like, I, I love the filmic part of Wes Anderson movies, but mm -hmm. you could say that a lot of his newer stuff relies more on the visuals mm -hmm. and maybe less on the story. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I still love them, <laughs> mm -hmm. but this one, it definitely is, the story is what's important here. And then the camera kind of helps with the story mm -hmm. and the settings and the set design and the oh costumes. And <laughs> it was it was a bit much. <laughs> it was a lot of bright colors. And it was just kind of a little bit in your face, but I, like that's kind of what they were going for. Even the colors though of this like reminds me of early 2000s for some reason. <laughs> like there's the something... mustard. Yeah, just about this movie that feels very much like in that kind of little time capsule. Mm. And I'm just watching it, I'm like, yeah, this is like an indies 2000 movie. <laughs> like, yeah, that's just what yeah. it is. No, definitely. Royal Tenenbaum would you recommend for people to watch definitely think that it's one to watch um have like a glass of wine with it it feels it feels like i said it, for me it felt longer than it actually was because it's a slow running movie but every moment is important i'd say especially if uh if you're someone who has seen other wes anderson movies mm. but maybe hasn't seen this one mm -hmm. i think you would enjoy it and maybe have a better idea of like what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you've never seen any of these, his movies before, I could say you could start with this one, mm -hmm. but there might be some that are a little bit easier to get into. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching with us. It's been a blast and a half. Had a really good time. As always, you could like this video or subscribe even better if you want to see something for us to watch in the future like a movie or a tv show please let us know in the comments and we'll get on that right away for you yeah yeah woohoo <laughs> <laughs>